Hello, Mrs. H here. This is part three of three walkthroughs for AQA Paper 1 2019. Question six. People with diabetes have difficulty controlling their blood glucose concentration. Which part of the blood transports glucose? Lymphocytes, plasma, platelets or red blood cells? Well, the glucose is dissolved in the plasma part of the blood, so we'll go with plasma. Glucose is often found in urine of people with diabetes. Name a chemical used to test for glucose. That is going to be Benedict's reagent. And describe a test that could be used to show that a person's urine contains glucose. Well, we could add Benedict's reagent to the urine and heat that in a water bath. If glucose is present, the colour will change from blue to orange or yellow, brick red, green, any of those colours. If you wrote any of those down, that would indicate glucose was present. The body cells of a person with untreated diabetes lose more water than the body cells of a person who does not have diabetes. Explain how diabetes can cause the body cells to lose more water. The blood will have a higher concentration of glucose and therefore a lower concentration of water than the cells. The water molecules will move out of the cells and into the blood from a high water concentration to a low water concentration through a partially permeable membrane by osmosis. Glucose is absorbed into the blood in the small intestine by both diffusion and active transport. Describe how the small intestine is adapted for efficient absorption. Well, the small intestine has folds called villi, which increase the surface area. Each villus have, or villi, plural, have capillaries that are one cell thick. This keeps the diffusion distance for food molecules moving into the blood short. The blood supply provided by these capillaries maintains a concentration gradient, i.e. as soon as the food molecules diffuse into the blood, the circulation of the blood flow moves that blood on, keeping the concentration gradient. Cells in the villi will contain lots of mitochondria, which are pretty handy because they can release energy from aerobic respiration, and then this energy can be used in active transport. Question seven, a small animal called an axolotl lives in water. The axolotl has a double circulatory system. Define the term double circulatory system. And I just want you to appreciate my lovely diagram of an axolotl. But if you're not convinced by my diagram, there is one on the next page, so don't panic. Anyway, a double circulatory system. Blood is pumped to the lungs by the right side of the heart. And that's called the pulmonary circuit and blood is pumped to the rest of the body by the left side of the heart, and that's called the systemic circuit. Figure seven shows the double circulatory system of the axolotl. So we've got gas exchange surfaces and we've got the body there. The heart of the axolotl has only one ventricle, label the ventricle on figure seven. There's no other place it could be. Explain why having only one ventricle makes the circulatory system less efficient than having two ventricles. The oxygenated and deoxygenated blood are going to mix in one ventricle. They don't do that in a heart with two ventricles. Because the ventricle has some deoxygenated blood in it, when the ventricle contracts, less oxygenated blood will reach the body cells. Figure eight shows an axolotl. So here we go, that's what one looks like. Explain why an axolotl may die in water with a low concentration of oxygen. The oxygen concentration gradient from the water to the axolotl will be less steep. So less oxygen will diffuse into the blood at the gills, you know, those fluffy things on, on the heads there. Oxygen might even diffuse out of the axolotl. With less oxygen, there will be less aerobic respiration, so there will be less energy released for the axolotl. Remember not to say 
less energy produced because you won't get marked for that. So there will be less energy released. The axolotl will find it difficult to move, for example, and more anaerobic respiration will take place, meaning more lactic acid is produced, which is toxic. So the poor little axolotl, if it's not going to be able to move, it might be picked off by predators. I mean, that's one fate that could await it. If a gill of an axolotl is removed, a new gill will grow in its place. Scientists hope to use information on how axolotls grow new gills to help with regenerating human tissue. Name the type of cell that divides when a new gill grows. Stem cells. Name one condition that could be treated using regenerated human tissue. There are lots of things that stem cells are used for. So one that would be a popular one in your textbook would probably be paralysis. You could put diabetes, Parkinson's, heart disease, stroke, cystic fibrosis, cancer, burns. The list goes on. Suggest one reason why an axolotl is a suitable animal for research in the laboratory. Well, it's easy to breed and removing a gill won't actually kill the axolotl. I imagine it's not going to be very pleasant though so there's ethical issues there. An axolotl may not be a suitable animal to study when researching regeneration in human tissue. So it could be or it could not be. Okay so suggest one reason why it's not suitable. Well it's not human for a start is it? So it is an amphibian. It's not a mammal like humans. Question eight, pancreatic cancer develops when a malignant tumour grows inside the pancreas. The pancreas produces digestive enzymes. What is an enzyme? An enzyme is a protein that catalyzes or speeds up chemical reactions in living organisms. Enzymes have a specific shaped active site that has a complementary shape to its substrate. Carbohydrates is an enzyme produced by the pancreas. Name two other organs in the digestive system that produce carbohydrates. That is going to be salivary glands and small intestine. One symptom of pancreatic cancer is weight loss. Explain how pancreatic cancer may cause a person to lose weight. Do not refer to hormones in your answer they're most likely going to have fewer enzymes released from the pancreas. So there will be less carbohydrates, protease and lipases, and this will mean that food can't be fully broken down. So if there's less glucose absorbed into the bloodstream at the small intestine, then there will be less respiration, so less energy released. With less glucose available, fat stores will be broken down to provide energy to the cells. So that's going to make the person lose their weight. There will be fewer amino acids absorbed. So fewer proteins will be made for repair, replacement and growth. And also the patient is most likely to be undergoing chemotherapy, radiotherapy. And that can cause nausea, a loss of appetite. So... Uh, that person's not going to be eating as much. Enzyme A and enzyme B are involved in controlling cell division in pancreatic cancer cells. Most cancer cells produce both enzyme A and enzyme B. Some people have a gene mutation that stops cancer cells producing enzyme B. Figure 9 shows how cell division is controlled in pancreatic cancer cells. Scientists have developed a drug that inhibits enzyme A. The drug is given to pancreatic cancer patients who have the gene mutation that stops cancer cells producing enzyme B. The drug only targets cancer cells. Explain why the drug can be used to treat pancreatic cancer in patients with the gene mutation. Use information from figure nine. Now that is a long question and then you've got to get your head around this diagram so let's head over to the diagram first so if we look here scientists have developed a drug that inhibits enzyme a and some people have a gene mutation that stops cancer cells producing enzyme b 
So with the combination of both of those together means there will be no enzymes that will cause the cells to divide uncontrollably. Right, so that is good, that is good news. So what we need to put for our answer is that the cancer cells cannot divide, so the tumor doesn't grow because both enzyme A and B are inhibited. And you can see from the diagram, you only need enzyme A or B in order for those cells to keep dividing uncontrollably and cause the cancer. So if neither of them are there, no cancer. Explain why the drug could not be used to treat pancreatic cancer in a patient that produces both enzyme A and enzyme B. The drug only prevents enzyme A, so there will still be enzyme B being made because these people don't have that mutation to stop it. So unfortunately, enzyme B will still be made, which will mean the cells can still divide uncontrollably and the tumour will continue to grow. The drug was trialled before it was licensed for use to improve validity of the results in the trial. Some patients were given a placebo and a double blind trial was used. Give reasons why a placebo and a double blind trial were used. There would need to be a placebo to take into account that patients think they feel better when they're told they're having a drug and it enables there to be a clear comparison with the effects of not taking the drug with the actual drug. And a double blind trial is where neither the patient nor doctor know who is taking a placebo and who is on the actual drug. So it prevents any biased results. One stage in a drug trial is to test the drug on healthy volunteers. What is the next stage? In the drug trial well looking at these testing on all patients with the disease testing on human tissue no testing on live animals no that would have been before wouldn't it testing on volunteers with the disease yes we tried to keep this all ethical that would be what we go for and last question a monoclonal antibody has been produced to treat pancreatic cancer explain how the monoclonal antibody works to treat pancreatic cancer. Well, the monoclonal antibody can be attached to a radioactive substance or a drug, and the monoclonal antibody will have a complementary shape to the antigens on the cancer cells. So they will connect, and then the radioactive substance or drug can destroy the cancer cells and stop them from dividing. Thanks for watching and well done for making it through all three parts. Good luck in your exams.